Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss disturbance one and if it's going to develop in the Gulf of Mexico or off the east coast of the United States. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Tuesday, July 30th, 2024. The black arrow is pointing towards disturbance one. And then we have two other tropical waves that we are monitoring, one south of the Cabo Verde Islands and one that is still over the west coast of Africa getting ready to come off the coast. And you can see with disturbance one compared to our two tropical waves, it doesn't have much in terms of moisture with it, but that's going to be changing within the next 24 to 48 hours. As you can see, we have our two pieces of vorticity associated with disturbance one, as we have two tropical waves that are actually merging together into one tropical entity. And once that is complete and gets into a more favorable environment, we'll see the moisture start to come back to life with this tropical system. As you can see right now, we don't have much going on. The middle of your screen is where actually that tropical wave axis is trying to spin up. And you can see there's very little thunderstorm activity associated with it. Down to the south, there is a little bit more in terms of moisture content. Uh, that's because this wave is embedded right now in the Saharan air layer. So because of that, it's got a 0% chance of developing over the next two days. But over the next seven days, it's now up to 60% chance of developing according to the National Hurricane Center. Uh, yesterday was at a 50-50 chance. Now we're up to 60% over the next seven days. So chances are increasing. So let's see what's going on on the models. Here's the GFS model. 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. So again, this is the spin and energy in the atmosphere about 1,000 to 5,000 feet up from the atmosphere, from the surface. The black hexagon would be disturbance one right below the center line of our Bermuda Azores high, and then our two tropical waves in pink and purple behind it. So if we look at the moisture content in the Atlantic, you can see how our wave doesn't have any thunderstorm convection with it because like I said, it's embedded in that Saharan air layer, but you can see how it's eroding away at it very slowly. So you have a pocket of strong Saharan air layer in the Eastern Caribbean and then right behind it. And then it's starting to become a little bit more favorable. And that's gonna only continue because we still have this very light wind shear environment that it's uh, moving in through. So by the time we get to two days from now on Thursday, August 1st, the first month of the ramp up towards the peak of hurricane season, which is around September 10th, we can see that this tropical wave will be moving right through Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, towards the Turks and Caicos potentially. And by that time, you can see how the moisture has now returned with this, so expect at least impacts in the form of flooding rain, mudslides, flash flooding, you name it, with the mountainous regions of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, you'll, you could potentially see a lot of rainfall from the system, even if it's not a tropical storm or hurricane at that point. Now you can see as it continues moving in that northwest flow across the islands, you can see it's going to be moving into more favorable environments. As you can see, the light wind shear in the blue right around Florida, so both the east and west coast in the Gulf of Mexico or the Gulf Stream will have the ability for this storm to potentially develop. And this one on the GFS model says it's going to be moving towards the Gulf of Mexico, and it's not quite developed at this point just yet. You can still see the, it's an open wave, no tight vorticity signature like we see on the bottom left of your screen in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And there's going to be a ton of moisture that's going to be surging up from South uh, Central America to help fuel this storm and the light wind shear environment in the Gulf of Mexico. So by the time we get to Tuesday, August 6th, which would be a week from now, potentially the GFS model is saying, hey, we're going to have a developing low pressure system 
into a tropical depression, maybe a weak tropical storm, just off the southern coast of the panhandle of Florida, potentially. Now, if we look at the European model, it's a little bit more aggressive, like it's been for the past week now, compared to the GFS. The GFS still isn't catching on to the storm quite well, but the European model is. So if we switch over this one, you can see, boom, it goes on the east coast of Florida, up the Gulf Stream, around the, the, uh, the curve of the United States, luckily on this model run, and becomes a very strong tropical storm as it recurves back out to the sea. So why the two different paths? Well, it comes down to the strength of the Bermuda Azores High. We also have this upper lip, this uh, trough that's going to be moving through the eastern half of the United States, creating that valley that I always talk about. So you have the Bermuda Azores High as the mountain, and then the valley is with the weakness between the high pressures where the hurricanes and tropical storms want to go, and tropical uh, waves as well. Now, the stronger a system is, can push up against that Bermuda Azores high and then ride around the edge of that mountain. If it's a weaker tropical storm, it doesn't have the thunderstorm height and organization like a hurt tropical, uh, if it's, I'm sorry, if it's a tropical wave, it doesn't have that organization like a tropical storm or a hurricane with the higher thunderstorms feeling the effects of this upper level trough coming into the eastern half of the United States. So yes, there's an opening but it continues moving more northwestward in the uh, GFS model versus the European model. So European model is on the left, GFS is on the right. This is where they are four days from now on August 3rd. But you can see how a stronger storm on the left with the European will feel that tug from the upper level trough more, pulling it northward and also pushing up against more of that Bermuda Azores high, whereas a weaker tropical wave will just slide underneath that upper level trough and enter the Gulf of Mexico because it hasn't developed just yet. So you can see that on the ensemble models here. Now, the GFS ensembles are hinting more towards a East Coast uh, storm, just like the European model is dominating on that right now. So we'll see if the model runs start to pick up on it on the GFS as we go forward. But there is still that one little straggler, as you can see there on the left, uh, where it's the GFS says, eh, well, maybe in seven days we'll be in the Gulf of Mexico, not the East Coast. So both possibilities are still on the table. We'll continue to monitor this storm. And even if this one doesn't develop for some reason, uh, because the environment looks to be at least on both models, favorable for development. Uh, if we go beyond the seven day mark, you can see that the Atlantic is supposed to get very active during weeks two and three in the month of August as we go ramp up towards the uh, climatological hurricane peak of the season, end of August into September and October. You can see we have upwards of a 40% chance of development in and around the main development region as we have those tropical waves are going to start coming off eroding more of that Saharan air layer away and potentially having the peak hurricane season start maybe a little bit sooner than we normally would which would be the end of August this could ramp up maybe the second week of August so we'll keep an eye on that as a reminder we have super thanks available on deciphering weather so if you'd like to donate to the channel please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.